record before I forget. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday. I hope everyone's having a wonderful evening. Hope everyone's having a great time. Thank you so much uh, for the privilege of your time tonight. I know that this is time that you don't get back. So it's my objective tonight to just bring you above and beyond value, to help you master this thing you're not getting, right? The thing that goes on up here, the, the thing that makes or breaks your business, the thing that will either bring you to the highest heights or bring you down to the lowest lows. That's what this is about. And so um, just like Brittany talked about, before we get started, make sure the phones are on top. Make sure that you have the, if you're doing the Instagram story thing, take the picture now, post it later, right? You know, put the kids in the closet, whatever you got to do. I'm just kidding. Don't put your kids in a closet. That is a horribly irresponsible decision. Don't do that. Um, but let's start with some participation, guys. In the chat box, go ahead and type in, what's a really big goal you have for this year? What's a really big goal you have for the end of the year? Type that into the chat box. I know that five-star elite is probably something you guys are going for, but how about you guys personally? Seven-star elite, I love it. What else, guys? Type in some, some really big goals you have for the end of the year. And as you type those in, there's something really cool about these goals. There's a way to do it. Meaning if you thought of the goal, that means that it's possible. It, I'm guessing diamond, one star, seven star, all that stuff. People have done it before, yes, right? And there's a recipe. There's a way to make it happen. You know your basic business building activities. You know the recipe, but something you might miss along the way is that the way you go about using your ingredients in that recipe is what matters most. So what does that mean? That means that you can invite a billion people, but if your mindset's off, you're actually going to repel them. You could have the best training for your team in the whole world, but if your mindset's off, they're not going to do anything. In fact, how many of you, how many of, the, of you, I can't talk today, have ever gotten upset at the fact that your team isn't growing fast enough? Raise your hand if that's you. Don't lie. If you lie about that, you lie about other shit too, right? It's so true. We all get upset about stuff from time to time. You could put hours into a challenge group, but if your mind sets off, they're going to think that a, they're a pawn that you're using. So my point with all this is that what goes on in your mind, your mindset, your self-talk, it's by far and above the most important piece of your business coming true by far, right? And you've heard the cliches before, right? You've heard the change your thinking, change your life cliches, haven't you? You've heard that. But what does that even mean, right? What does that even mean? You're going to get to a place tonight where instead of just hearing it as a cliche, you're going to know how to apply it when you don't really want to. Have you ever been in that spot? Like, have you noticed like when you're pissed off, you tend to want to stay pissed off? Or when you're depressed, you kind of want to stay depressed. You kind of want to stay down. And if someone tries to correct you and make you feel better and up your game, you're like, dude, go away, right? You know what I'm talking about? And typically it's those closest to you. Like I know with Janice, my wife, if she tries to make me feel better in the moment, I'm like, dude, I just want to sulk for a minute, right? So how do we break free from that? How do we break free from that? So it doesn't take you a, a week or two weeks to bounce back. It takes you three minutes. That's what tonight's going to be about. Can you imagine in your business, how many of you guys have ever gotten consistent and then gotten really inconsistent? Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Awesome. Can you imagine if you have the right mindset to never get inconsistent again? What would happen? Everything would change, right? Everything would change. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. But before we do, we have to understand where negative self-talk comes from. Where does it come from? Where do these limiting beliefs come from? I'm going to share with you a couple stories from my life and share with you kind of some things that I went through. Then I'm going to share with you three things that you'll need to master if you want to make this year your breakthrough year, okay? So you might have a totally different story. That's cool, doesn't matter. Just try to plug your story in and see where you can kind of fit yours in here and just kind of see where your limiting beliefs might have come from. So growing up, I had an emotional roller coaster of a childhood. It gave me really messed up beliefs about how life is. And I'm curious, type a big yes in that chat box if you can relate to the topic of money stress. I like how some of you guys were reaching to type yes before I even said what it was. But <laughs> if you can relate to the topic of money stress, big yes if that's you. That was a huge, 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 huge limitation in my life for a very long time. Money was the biggest source of stress. I was $92,000 in student debt when I got out of college. 92 grand in debt. And I remember growing up, my parents would scream and fight and yell every day about money. Every day. That's not hyperbole for this call. It was every freaking day. There was always a screaming match. And I didn't know why. I just equated money to pain, right? Money equals pain. That's what it felt like. And so I would watch my dad work 90 or 100 hour weeks just to barely get by. Too much month at the end of the money. And that's what it felt like. It was just like money is super hard to make. And once you get it, it goes away. Have you guys ever noticed that even if you get a pay raise, the money still disappears and you don't know why? It's because of limiting beliefs about money. That's what it has to do with it. It has nothing to do with the amount of money you earn. 
right? Your bank account is not a reflection of your income level. It's a reflection of your behavior. That's what it is. And so I didn't realize at the time I, I had horrible beliefs about money. And I believe that tore relationships apart because my parents got divorced, all this stuff. So how many of you guys would agree that money could lead to freedom in your life? Raise your hand if you believe money could lead to freedom in your life. Amazing. But how many of you guys also have the, uh, a belief in the back of your mind that money might equal pain at the same time? right? Money can do a pain. So if money equals freedom and money equals pain, do you see the conflict? Do you see how that might hold you back a little bit? What I did when I started business seven, in business seven years ago, I wanted to help all these people. I wanted to serve all these people. I wanted to change their lives. It's really, really bad. But money is bad. Like if you're not making money, you can't sustain the message and the mission to serve more people. You can't, you need to be making money or else your business isn't going to stay up. Right? So that was a huge limiting belief that I had to break through. And on top of the money, I had a really tough relationship with my mom and I've forgiven my mom for all the pain in my past. That's a whole other topic for a different day. But I started off my success journey very angry and very sad. And the reason was because I didn't know who I had to be. Do you guys have a person like this in your life where you don't know who you have to be to feel worthy of their love, right? Like it's kind of like walking on eggshells around them. They have a problem of the week, right? Going on and and they're like, they're, it's almost like you're always manipulated and feel guilty into just like you did something wrong. And that's how it was growing up. I never knew who I had to be to feel worthy of a love. I never felt like I was enough. So growing up, not feeling like I was enough, you can imagine how that messed with me, right? Like I always craved validation. I would always change who I was just to be accepted. And I would never go after a big dream until I had other people rooting me on because I didn't have enough belief in myself to go after it yet. How many of you guys have a big dream, a big goal that you want to go after, but you don't feel like you're enough for it? Raise your hand. Be totally honest. Because we, we all have stuff like that in our lives. That's what I went through for a really long time. So you can imagine when I started my journey, I wanted to make mass impact, but I'm not enough. Conflicting beliefs. So you might have a totally different story. But where can you relate? What limiting belief or beliefs you have now because of something that happened years ago that you haven't changed the meaning of yet? Because until you learn to break through that, you will be stuck. So I remember one time uh, the bank account overdrafted again and it was like negative 49 cents on chase.com, right? That's what it said. And I remember in the moment, excuse my language ahead of time, I was just like, fuck this, man. Like I'm done with this. And I just hit this pain threshold where the pain of staying the same overtook the pain of change. And I remember Darren Hardy said something critical in, when I was around that time in my personal growth journey. He said, if you ever want to change your life, you have to invest 10% of your earnings into your personal development. You have to, or else you're never going to advance. Because put this in your notes, you cannot change your life from the mindset that brought you to your current life or created your current life. You cannot change your life from the mindset that created your current life that you have now. It's impossible. You are at your max. Right now, every single day that you learn more, grow more, you hit your max. So every day you have to keep on learning and growing and you have to invest in people that have the mindsets to get you there. So that's what I had to do. And then I read it in You Are a Badass. Jim Sincero talked about put it on the credit card already, right? And all this stuff. And so I was like, oh shit, okay, I guess I got to do that. And so I remember taking out a credit card and putting coaching on there and seminars and books and courses to try to figure out what was going on. And I thought it was a business strategy. I thought it was that I didn't have the right system or technique, but it had nothing to do with the system or technique. It had to do with this. It had to do with my belief in myself that I couldn't do this. And it hurts. And so I spent seven years trying to figure it out. And I did. I figured it out. And now my profession is teaching people how to break through those same things that I've been through. And that's what I'm going to start the process of teaching you today. There are three things that you absolutely must master if you ever want to break through and live the life that you truly want to live. One of those are, could be beneficial, right? Number one, you must resolve your inner conflicts. You must resolve your inner conflicts. What does that mean? That means pain of the past. That means forgiveness. That means letting go of those people that hurt you. That means stopping the blaming. That means letting go of the victim mentality right? When you don't, if you don't come to terms with the pain of your past and to take it a step further until you are genuinely grateful for the pain you went through, you're not going to reach your full potential. You could even succeed a little bit, but you're never going to reach your full potential. So that's number one. You must resolve your inner conflicts. Number two is you must shatter your limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering beliefs. Shatter limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering beliefs. Change those feelings of, is success actually possible for me? To hell yeah, I'm going after this. 
like learning how to do that and not just say it like an affirmation that your brain doesn't believe, but actually feel it in your core. And then finally, close the gap. And what that means is genuinely appreciating the journey of who you're becoming instead of it just being a cliche. Instead of it just be appreciate the journey, actually doing it. How many of you guys have heard the cliche appreciate the journey, but you have no freaking clue how to appreciate the journey because you're so stressed out about how the fact that you're not at your goals yet. You know what I'm talking about? So how do you do that? That's what I teach people. That's what I am a master of. I became obsessed with one simple idea. And that's the fact that business success and money do not create happiness. Happiness creates those things. Business success and money don't bring you happiness. Weight loss isn't going to bring you happiness. Happiness brings you those things. I became obsessed with that idea. And now I have courses and programs and coach people all over the world about this stuff. And it's amazing. So when I figured that out, I started sharing it. And the reason I tell you this is because it didn't start that way. When I started my business, the overwhelming amount of negative self-talk and the secret obstacles and the lack of belief and all this inner conflict that I had with mommy issues and money issues and all this stuff that I didn't even realize were going on stopped me in my tracks. And I created a system to overcome that. I'm going to offer you that system at the end of this call, just for full disclosure here. We don't have time to go through all of that in one hour, but if you take this really seriously, you're going to learn what you need to do to change the things. So let's start with number one. Number one, write this down. Your thoughts are always the reason. Your thoughts are always the reason. Your thoughts are the reason you're at the weight you're at. Your thoughts are the reason you're at the business you're at. Your thoughts are the reason you have the relationship you do. It is not someone else's fault. It is because of your thoughts. So what do I mean by this? This is about rewiring the supercomputer of your mind. This is about taking the way that your mind naturally responds to challenges and flipping it completely so your natural default setting is empowering. And so have you ever noticed, like, have you ever taken a shower? And don't worry, this isn't going to get weird. Have you ever taken a shower and you're in the shower and you have all these thoughts like bouncing around like a pinball machine every single direction? And you have, it's almost like you have a crazy person living in your head. You know what I mean? They're bouncing around from one thing to another and you don't know how to stop them. Those thoughts, one, if you listen to those thoughts, you might come, you might find what some of your limiting beliefs are, but those are limiting stories. That's your inner voice that's trying to hold you back. And you start to say those, right? Money is bad. Building a team is hard. It's so much easier for Brit. I'm not enough. I, I can't do this. Will success ever be possible for me? I'm too fat. Whatever it is. If you say that shit enough times, what happens? You believe it, don't you? You believe it. So put this in your notes. Whatever you repeat to yourself consistently, you will believe whether it's BS or not. Whatever you repeat to yourself consistently, you will believe whether it's BS or not. So for example, have you ever been with your friends over the years and they'll like sound cooler than you are, like than you actually are, you exaggerate a story, right? To get more laughs or more attention. You know what I'm talking about, right? You exaggerate a story to get more laughs or more attention. So you share the story. They're laughing about it. They're having a good time. So the next time you're all getting back together, you exaggerate that story again. It doesn't need to, be, need to be a big detail, but just maybe a little exaggerated detail. And then you do it again. Then you do it again. And you find yourself like five years into the future, not having any idea what part of that story is true and what part of that story is false. You know what I'm talking about? Like you're with your friend, you're having a good time. And you go, is that actually real? The same thing happens with your beliefs, with your negative self-talk. Only instead of it being a fun party topic, it ruins your freaking life. And you go through life believing this. It creates inner conflict. It changes the way you lead your life and your business. If you feel like you're forcing things, or if you're not pulled in the direction of your dreams, or if it feels like it's harder for you than everyone else, that's a belief that is not true. That is not written down in like some sort of scripture or anything. That is literally something that a belief, by the way, is nothing more than a feeling of certainty. That's all a belief is. It's just a feeling of certainty. It's a gut feeling that you're not enough. It's a gut feeling that money is bad. That's all it is. So to change this, we have to, we have to learn how to believe, obviously, right? You have to believe that you're enough before the evidence of your business is ever going to say that you're enough. How do you do that when the evidence of your life is not saying that's true? That's what I'd like to teach you. So to do this, to start the process of this, you need to change your questions. Your life is a reflection of the habitual questions you ask yourself. Your life is a reflection of the habitual questions you ask yourself. So if you say things like, why am I so fat? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to gain weight. You're never going to lose weight. If you say things like, why is this business so hard? Or why am I stuck? Guess what? You're never going to build a great business ever. Like, let me give you an example. Like, have you ever um, gone after a really big goal or a big dream? 
and you, you want to convince yourself that you're good enough or that you deserve that big goal or that big dream. And you do the vision board, the goal setting exercise and Shalene Johnson calls it a push goal, right? And you have that one really big goal that would change everything. It's the hundred K it's the retire the spouse. It's whatever it is. Right. And you're looking at that goal. It'd be amazing. How many of you guys have that goal in mind? That one that would be amazing and would change everything for you. There's that little voice back here, right? That little voice that goes, you're never going to do that, right? Like, it's like that voice already knows you're going to fail before you even start trying. You know what I'm talking about? And even though you might go through the motions, you still have that limiting belief that says it's never going to happen. Well, that's not very fun. That doesn't help you get to your goals. It'll hold you back so much. And so that devil whispering doubt and insignificance into your subconscious mind, you have to change that. And we can't do it all in an hour, but I can give you the start. So if you ask yourself bad questions, you get really bad answers. An example of that would be, why am I stuck? When you're focused on why you're stuck, does the focus go to the outcome or the solution you want? No, not at all. It focuses on where you're stuck, so you stay stuck. And you, find, you think you just have to work harder. I am willing to bet right now, like if you're consistently doing your job in your business, I'm willing to bet right now that if you resolve these conflicts, you wouldn't even have to work as hard and get exponentially better results. Everything would change from leading yourself towards a solution. Have you ever noticed when you're in a really positive mood, you're more creative and you think of solutions faster? Why? Because you're focused on what you want. How many of you guys have ever bought a car and the second you decide you want to buy that car, you see it everywhere, everywhere, every parking lot, every street corner. Why? Is it because it was never there or is it because you started looking for it, right? Well, if you didn't look for that car, you'd never, you'd never get that car, right? Same thing with your dreams. So do an example in real life right now. Look around the room you're in right now and count up the number of things that you can find that are red. Ready, go, look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Count the things that are red. You're going, why is he making me do this? Look for red, why are you staring at me? Look for red, look for red, look for red. Keep looking for red, look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Keep looking for red, look for red, look for red. Look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Awesome, type in the chat box. How many things you find that were red? What do we got? What do we got? How many things? 10, amazing. What else? What else? Nine, five, seven? You guys all passed, by the way. You all passed, flying colors, A plus. Great job, but question. How many things do you find that were blue? No idea. Why? Because you weren't looking for beach body blue, were you? So do me a favor right now. Look around the room you're in and find the number of things you can find that are blue. Ready, go. Look for blue. 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 Keep looking for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. Where's that beach body blue coming from? Look for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Keep looking for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. One of you guys is staring directly at me. Look for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Keep looking for blue. Look for blue. Look for blue. Type in that chat box. How many more things did you find that were blue this time? What do we got? 22. Amazing. What else, guys? 13. 15. Nine, amazing. How many of you guys even saw teal or green and pretended it was blue so you would feel successful at this exercise? You know who you are, right? So what's, what's my point in saying this? When you focus on what you don't want, red. That's doubt, that's skepticism, that's pain. It's what you don't want, that's why am I stuck, that's why am I so fat, those are the negative things. And when you look for it, you never see blue. Your dreams, what you want, why you can, the goals, you never see them and vice versa, right? When you look for blue, you don't see red. Same idea. So your mind will move in the direction of your dominant thoughts. So why, have you ever wondered why Jim Rohn has a quote that says, stand guard at the gates of your mind or weeds grow automatically? What does that mean? What he means is unless you condition your mind to find blue, you'll automatically find red. Meaning your natural default setting is to be negative. Do you know that? Your natural default setting is actually to be negative. Why? Because your brain doesn't care if you hit your goals. Your brain does not care if you achieve success club this month. Your brain doesn't care if you lose weight. Your brain doesn't care about the relationship goals you have with your spouse. Your brain doesn't care. Your brain's primary function is to keep you alive. That's it. It's a survival mechanism. That's all it is. It's, it's biological, right? So at any moment in time, it's looking for what could go wrong. It's looking for what to protect you from. So when you think about your first year in business and you go, I'm gonna go elite, your brain goes, no, 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 no. Let's be realistic. I think I've ever said that. Let's set a goal we know we can hit. 
let's not go for the big one. Let's, let's go for Emerald by the end of the year instead. Let's go for Diamond instead of going for our big dreams that would actually change your life, right? Not saying that your dream is bad, right? But is that actually your dream that based out of a goal that you want to, uh, is that a goal based off of who you are or a goal based off of who you want to become, right? We need to stop setting goals based off of who we are and start setting goals based on who we want to become. So why does your brain do this, by the way? Because millions of years ago, you weren't worried about an Instagram live. You were worried about the saber-toothed tiger hiding in the bushes that was going to eat your baby. That's what you were worried about. <laughs> and we haven't evolved much since then, right? So we equate the same amount of fear and or anticipated pain to an Instagram live or a vulnerable, vulnerable story as we do to a tiger attack, right? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but it happens, right? How many of you guys have ever clicked that vulnerable post and you feel like you're freaking out, right? You're freaking out from a vulnerable post. It feels like you're about to get mauled. But you're not. It's just literally clicking post on social media, right? So that's why our brain does what it does. An example in real life, ask yourself this right now. Why am I not enough to build my business? Try it. Why am I not enough to build my business? Blech. Doesn't taste very good, does it? Doesn't taste very good. How motivated do you feel when you say, why am I not enough to build my business, right? Not very motivated. Doesn't matter how many books you read. You might be trying all the things, but it's not going to work. You feel that limiting belief in your head, right? So listen to all the crap that pours out of you, right? How many of you guys have had limiting stories? Like put type yes if you've ever said any of these to yourself consistently. Why isn't my team doing anything? Why can't I get it right? Why don't people want to join me? Why am I stuck? Why is it so much harder for me than everyone else? Why is it so much easier for everyone else than me? Am I actually capable of success? Like I don't have enough time. Why don't I have enough time? Why do I never catch a break? Why is it so much easier for my upline? Why can't I do anything right? Will I always be this stuck? How many of you guys are assholes to yourself like that on a regular basis, right? It doesn't feel very good, does it? And I bet it leads to a lot of pain, a lot of procrastination. There you are looking at your life frustrated with the results you're getting. And no matter how much someone tells you they believe in you, it doesn't change the fact that you have the voice in your head that says you're not enough. So when you set a goal, your dominant beliefs determine if that goal will ever come true. And goal setting is nothing more than the process of trying to create a new reality as opposed to your current reality. That's all goal setting is. The gap between where you are and where you want to be, whether you're looking for red or looking for blue, that's it. And until that language is consistently blue, it's going to be really freaking hard to achieve your dreams. Really hard. So if you say, why isn't my team growing or why is my business so hard to build? Try it right now. Why is this business so hard? Just try that. Notice your brain looks. It looks for the answer, doesn't it? And even if you're successful, you start to question things. That's how insidious negative self-talk is. So your entire life can be changed if you upgrade your questions because your brain is a Google search engine. It will answer whatever you type into the search bar. But unless you type in something blue, pull it automatically find something red. And when you see red, what do you never see? You never see blue. You see why you might be stuck. Right? And so you, what you have to do is learn, this is just one part of shattering limiting beliefs, but you have to learn what questions to ask yourself. Because think about this, like to the untrained mind, the idea of why is it so easy to lose or uh, why is it so easy to not be fat anymore? Or why is it so easy to never self-sabotage again? To the untrained mind, that sounds empowering, but that's actually really disempowering. Because are you actually focusing on what you want or are you focusing on what you don't want? Focusing on what you don't want. Self-sabotage is not what you want. You want productivity, right? But self-sabotage isn't what you want. So you need to learn exactly what questions to ask yourself when you start this process. Does this make sense? And when you learn what those questions are, then what you do is you flood your mind with it. My wife probably thought I was crazy because I took my empowering questions and I recorded them on my phone and I listened to them while I slept at night. And disclaimer, don't Choke yourself with a headphone cord. That'd be really bad. So pull this, but pull a disclaimer here on this call. But seriously, I flooded my mind with it because I knew unless I program AirPods, there you go, right here, right, AirPods. So I knew that if I didn't flood my mind with blue, I'd automatically find red. So you need to understand what questions to ask yourself. And you need to identify what those limiting beliefs are if you ever want to find the pain that's strong enough to change them. So please understand, this is one of the main things about changing your life is changing your questions. Is this one mindset strategy helpful? I think you can use this in your life and your business. When you learn what those questions are, the game changes forever. I'm going to give you an opportunity to learn how to find what those questions are. I'm going to give you guys an offer at the end that will teach you that. 
But for now, just know that you need to learn what questions to ask so you can program your mind with them. Cool? Number two, your problem isn't the problem. How you face your problem is the problem. Your problem isn't the problem. How you face your problem is the problem. Remember what, how I talked about the third master skill of changing your life is that you need to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be by genuinely appreciating the journey. Well, this section is going to show you logically why that's so important and you'll be able to see what you're doing that might be holding you back. So when you're so emotionally attached to a goal coming true, you actually push that goal away from you. Now, don't take this to mean you shouldn't be excited or passionate about your goals. You should get your hopes up. In fact, if you don't get your hopes up, your goals likely won't happen. How many of you guys have ever said, I don't want to get my hopes up about something in life? You're screwing yourself, man. Because here's the thing. You don't want to get your hopes up because your happiness is determined by your goal. But when you adopt a life and a mindset where your happiness has nothing to do with your goals, just something you bring, then all of a sudden you want to get your hopes up because it gives you the energy to achieve your goals. Does that make sense? Right? So if you're emotionally attached to your goals coming true, you push them away because your happiness is dependent on the goal coming true. Right? Does that make sense? If you've ever been, how many of you guys have ever done this? You push so hard for a goal or a dream or success club or diamond or whatever it is. And it's what you've been thinking about for a long time and you want it so bad and you join the push groups and you're thinking about it. It's all you think about and you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing, but it's like the goal evades you. It's like, it's just out of reach every time. It's like, it's flirting with you. Lose three pounds, gain four, right? It's like, it's can't catch me, can't catch me, can't catch me, right? That's what it does. It flirts with you. It's like, it's evading you. That's what happens if you are attached to your dream. It's because you have a mindset of this must happen and then I'll be fulfilled. And when you think that way, whether you succeed or not, don't you always feel miserable? If your happiness is tied to achievement, it doesn't matter if you achieve anything. There's always a what's next right? So you always feel miserable. And when you try to build a business that way, it's incredibly overwhelming and intense and stressful to try to solve that because you have no idea how to do it. So you start to accept that that's what it is. I just have to work this hard to be, have to be successful. And yeah, you got to work hard, but you just have this mindset of, I, I can't be happy until, and whatever you repeat to yourself consistently, you what? You believe, even if it's not true. Remember, Huge important note here. This is my overall obsession with everything I teach. And it's changed thousands of lives across the world. And it's the fact that business, success, and money do not cause happiness. Happiness causes those things. Happiness and appreciation for the journey and the challenge is how you overcome the challenge. I didn't get that. It's why I stayed stuck in business for years. Because think about it. Why does Sean T, I work with a lot of beach body teams. Why does Sean T always say, if you want to lose weight, you have to love the body you have now. Why does he say that? Because why would you hate the vessel that's the key to your freedom? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If you want to change your life, why would you hate your life? Because that's all you have to change your life. Your life now is all you have. So why hate it? Why hate it? It's all you have. You can't hate it if you want to succeed. So I used to say I should be further along. I should be making more money. I shouldn't be $92,000 in student debt. I should have this. I should have that. I should be further along. Then I was shooting all over myself, right? And it didn't feel very good to do that. You just feel stuck and miserable and down. And you're like, you're like doing the things, but you don't know what you even need to fix, right? You don't even know what you need to fix. You just know that something's off. That's how I felt. And I just felt stuck. And like, I didn't know what to do. And I was pushing away the lesson that was the key to my freedom. Listen, until you learn to love your life as it is right now, you won't have your dreams. That is one of the master skills to success, loving where you are now, including the pain, including the trauma, including the hardship. When you can love it and be grateful for it, that's where the game changes. And I'll teach you how, but that's where the game changes forever. Because if you love where you're at and you're failing, then don't you learn something and it doesn't become a bad thing anymore. And when you learn something, guess what happens? You make changes and you grow, don't you? So you get the result faster. Does this make logical sense to everyone? Right? I'm just kind of trying to step into the common sense corner with this stuff without going too deep into the how. So you can see how to change it, like why it's so important to understand this before you dive in. So put this in your notes, seeing your current good is the fastest way to increase more good. 
Step into the common sense corner again. If you're God, the universe, whatever you believe in, are you going to give more to the person that's complaining about having less? Or are you going to give more to the person that loves everything they already have, including the challenge? Does that make sense? So what's awesome about this one skill is it means you don't have to work nearly as hard for exponentially better results because most people try to climb this big mountain of success. Like put your dream on top of a mountain for a second. Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Dream on the mountain. I'll be happy when I get to the top. Don't lie. Come on. Everyone's done that, right? And the problem with that is that it's the same thing as trying to climb a mountain with a blindfold on. That's what it's like. Because if you need to get there now, and you can't see where you're going, you're going to step off that trail and you're going to feel around and try to make a beeline for the top and you don't even know where it is. You're going to trip, you're going to fall, you're going to break a leg, you're going to fall off a cliff and die. And even if you magically happen to stumble upon the top, you can't see any of the beauty. There's no freighting point of climbing that mountain. This is the elite coach that feels empty inside. This is the mom that gets her whole to-do list done and still is stressed about tomorrow. That's attachment. That is living in a state of attachment where you need the goal to happen and then you can be fulfilled and happy, right? And so what would happen though, if you just chill, like chill out a little bit and you take the blindfold off and you appreciate the ups and the downs, the peaks and the valleys, you, you appreciate the beauty around you, you appreciate the wildlife, the weather, all the stuff, follow the metaphor here. You appreciate the downslopes, the upslopes, all of it, right? How many of you guys have ever gone hiking out west? Anyone ever gone to BAM for all, like, or uh, Jasper, right? You guys are in Canada, right? One of my favorite places I've ever been. And when I was there and I'm on the trailer, how many of you guys have ever been hiking out there? If you've ever been hiking out there, is it easier to get to your summit if you step off the trail and make your own path? Or is it easier to get to the summit if you follow the trail that's already there? Right? Instead of making a beeline for the top and being super stressed until you get there, just follow the trail life's giving you. Stay on the path. And when you do that, you can relax. You can take water breaks. You get to cross these beautiful streams. You get to see all the mountains in the distance. You get to see the wildlife, all this stuff. It becomes amazing. And when you get to the top, you actually appreciate it because you can see all the beauty around you and you appreciate all the hard work you did. Everything changes. Everything changes. Do you see the power of this? Right? You never turned around and said, ah, this trail is stupid. Right? You never said that. You stayed on the trail. So if you live that way, don't you become more relaxed? And when you become more relaxed, doesn't that change how you lead your team? Doesn't that change how you are in a relationship? The creativity you have, the motivation you have to exercise, all these things, it changes everything. So my challenge to you is tonight, make a decision that you're gonna go after these big dreams, not for the goals themselves, not for the mountaintop itself, but for the person you become for the growth you experience, for the lives you touch. If growth becomes your objective and you're on that trail and that trail is going downhill away from the summit, meaning coach quits, return order, drop in rank, miss success, the volume's lower. You're going downhill away from the summit. If your objective is growth and you're going downhill, what happens? Don't you learn something instead of hate something? You learn something. And when you learn something, you can make the necessary tweaks to get to the summit so much faster. Are you following me here? Does this make sense? Go become committed to the top and the climb, not attached to the top. I hope this makes sense. And so take out your sheet of paper and draw two circles next to each other. Two circles, not a Venn diagram, but just two circles right next to each other. And above the left circle, write the word attachment. And above the Above the left circle, write the word attachment. Above the right circle, write the word commitment. Left attachment, right commitment. When you're in the state of, I need to get there now and I can't be happy until I do, what emotions do you have on a regular basis? Type them into the chat box. What emotions do you have on a regular basis? Type it in, what do we got? I'm guessing frustration. I'm guessing overwhelm. No one feels any emotions, right? <laughs> Anxiety. What else, guys? Type into the chat box. What do you feel? Stress. And as you see these come through, put these into your left circle. Stress, anxiety, frustration, overwhelm, exhaustion. Put this into your circle under attachment. Lost, yes, absolutely, nailed it. Put those all into your circle under attachment. Loss, overwhelm, exhaustion, overwhelm, frustration, stress, anxiety. Left circle attachment. But what would happen if you decide to become committed? Pumped to go on this hike. Pumped to see all the deer and elk and all this grizzly bears and all that, right? Pumped to see all of it. And 
pumped to see the top two. Really pumped about it. What happens then if you're like super cool either way and you're going on this hike for the journey of hiking, what emotions do you feel then? What emotions do you feel then? Gratitude, freedom, grateful, yep. What else? Proud, excitement. Keep it going, guys. What else? Clarity, focus, passion, alive maybe. Joy, free, peaceful, yeah. Like, see how fast they're coming out of you, right? So fast. That's what you want to feel. Put those all under commitment, under committed emotions. Freedom, grateful, proud, excited, clarity, focus, free, alive, joy, peaceful, calm, relaxed, happy. That's a good one. Put all those under commitment. Take a second. Finish writing those down. Any other emotions you can think of. And take a look at those two circles. Which of those two circles are you gonna be more likely to build a business from? Which of those two circles are you gonna be more likely to have a great marriage from? Which of those two circles are you more likely to be great parents or have great friendships or make more money from? Which of those two circles are you gonna be more creative on your social media posts from? Which of those two circles are you gonna be a better leader from? Commitment. And which circle do you live in? Just saying, do you see the disconnect? Do you see where you might go wrong? That's what you need to learn how to do. You need to learn how to live in a state of commitment. So just knowing that you do, you need to learn how. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck. So I can't go into the whole system of how to do that on a one-hour call, but I can give you one more tip that's going to make living this way just so much easier. You guys got time for one more? And, and Brett, I might go like, five, seven over the hour. Guys, I promise it'll be worth it. This one's so powerful. It's my most important tip of the evening. I call number three, the secret sauce. The secret sauce. You might know it as genuine gratitude. Genuine gratitude. That's number three, genuine gratitude. And by gratitude, I don't mean the gratitude where you complain about your day all day long and then write three things in a journal to feel better. That's not gratitude. <laughs> But seriously, like how many of you guys are so busy that you rush through your gratitude practice to check it off in your morning routine to feel better? Be totally honest. How many of you guys do that? You rush through, check it off in your morning routine to feel better. And be honest too here, like how many of you guys have a deep, emotional, heartfelt, five, 10 minute, really emotional gratitude practice that you do daily? Be totally honest. And if not, that's okay. But I'm going to tell you something I really need to remember. Gratitude is the strongest success tool you will ever use in your life, ever. Hands down. It is the greatest success tool you will ever use. It's a business tool. It's a marriage tool. It's a happiness tool. It's a money tool. It is the greatest success tool you will ever use in your entire life. And you are talking to someone right now that laughed his ass off the first time he heard that, right? Because I didn't have time for gratitude. I'm 92 grand in debt. I have to figure out how to build a business. I have to figure out how to, right? like, I have to figure out how to change all these lives and do all this stuff, right? And I didn't have time to do it, right? That's, that's what I said. And, and I was pushing away one of the most beautiful gifts of my whole life. Gratitude is one of the things that will change your whole life, guys. So why is that, though? Instead of just knowing that it is, why? Because it's impossible to feel emotional pain when you're grateful. You literally cannot feel anxiety, overwhelm, depression, fear, doubt, any of it, if you're deeply grateful. And if you don't believe me, it's because you never practiced it. Deeply practice it. It's like trying to be sad and jumping up and down in the mirror naked at the same time. You can't do both simultaneously. It's literally impossible, right? So <laughs> that's what gratitude and negative emotion is like. And so which of, if you're looking at those circles and you want to live in committed, a committed state, wouldn't gratitude be a great practice to try to do that? You can't feel attachment and emotions if you're grateful, right? So, and remember, not the BS gratitude, real gratitude, because this whole talk is all about looking for blue, right? It's all about the idea of letting go of those inner demons and plugging your mind with what you want, with blue, what you're grateful for. It's all about letting go of this attachment to the outcome and focusing on how you're grateful for the journey, right? So all of this is just gratitude. It's just appreciation. 
This whole talk is all about appreciation. That's all it is. Opportunities, things, solutions come to you so much faster when you're grateful for the life you already have. You attract things to your life. Like Jen Sincero calls it the gateway to abundance, right? So, but one of the best ways to realize the power of this, if you haven't been used to practicing it, is to have some perspective for a second and realize you're watching a video about mindset from anywhere in the world right now. Canada, UK, US, soon to be France, but literally you could be anywhere. You could be on a beach somewhere, right? anywhere in the world watching this video. You probably have a car. You can drive to your job where you make money for your family. You probably have a lock on your door in a safe apartment or home where you can go to bed at night without having to worry about burglars breaking in. You probably have uh, a doctor you can get treated for medical care, anything you need, right? You probably have a dog you can take uh, to the vet to get treated for like hot spots on their arm. You probably have a, an Apple TV tonight that you can turn on and watch, you know, Marie Kondo's tidying up or Breaking Bad or Friends or whatever you're into, right? And you're, you're probably going to take that for granted when someone's going to kill themselves in the next seven minutes. Just let that weigh on you for a second. Someone's going to end their own life in the next seven minutes. There's a mother out there whose baby isn't waking up tomorrow. There are people out there injecting needles into their arms to cope with pain. There are countries that live in communism. Two thirds of this world live on $900 a year. Can you imagine? $900 a year. Zero people on this call have an ounce of money problems. Zero. If you're in the bottom 1% of this country, of Canada, the UK, US, either of the three, you're in the top 1% of the world. Have some perspective. It is not bad. It's easy. You're so accustomed to the miracles happening around you every day. You don't even see them as miracles anymore, do you? Probably view miracles as scarce and don't appreciate how literally everything around you was once an idea. This team was what's an idea this incredible woman had. That's all it was. It was an idea. It was a that'd be cool if. That's what it was, which proves you can create miracles whenever you want to. This phone, this computer, this microphone, all of it, it's, it was an idea. We have the tendency to let go of gratitude and make it a rule that we can only be happy if something happens, if we lose weight, if we hit a business goal. No. Just we talked about a minute ago that is setting you up to suffer in life. If you can take away anything, from this entire talk, it's the following sentence. Bold it and live it and your life will change forever. Nothing needs to happen in order for you to be happy. Nothing. You don't need a reason to feel good. As long as you structure your life in a way that you do, meaning only if your husband says something or acts a certain way, only if your business hits a certain goal, only if you have this much money, you can feel happy, you're asking to suffer. You could be winning at life and feel like you're losing because the scorecard you're using to measure success is unfair because it only allows you to feel happy if the next thing happens. An achievement without gratitude is total failure. Achievement without gratitude is total failure. So think about this just for a second. You're breathing. You're alive. Can't that be enough? Like, can't that be enough? How many of you guys have ever lost someone in your life? Ever lost someone? your life. We all have, right? You have that gift right now. They don't have that gift anymore. So can't we be grateful for every day that we're here? Can't we be grateful for every opportunity we get to take? Every single invite we get to send out? Every single post we get to put up? It's a sign that you're breathing. It's a sign that you still can, which some people don't have that beautiful gift anymore. So we need to let go of those expectations or rules of what needs to happen in order to feel happy. We've got to let it go because your view of life literally determines your future. When you condition this into who you are, the anxiety, the overwhelm, the depression, the fear, it goes away and you become excited about every single day. The only reason I became this annoyingly happy is from practicing what I, what I teach, right? Because guess what? I went through a period of time and let's get a big yes fest going on. When you relate to one thing I'm about to say in my story in just a second, type yes. And then when you hear a second thing, type yes, a third thing, type yes. When you can relate to this, type a big yes. I went through a period of time in my life and tell me if this is you where I knew what I wanted so bad and I knew I was meant for so much more than what I was getting. So much. How many of you guys know that you're meant for so much more than what you're getting? So much more. 
but I find myself on the couch watching friends like four days a week, feeling bad for myself, right? Wishing life was different, having every tool I needed to be successful, having the trainings, having it. And my laptop was literally staring at me going, dude, change your life. You have the tools, but I couldn't get out of this slump. And it was like, I just didn't care, but I cared so much at the same time. You know what I'm talking about? You know that feeling of not caring, but caring, not caring so much. And then I get into these bouts of depression on the couch, wishing my life was different. And then I feel like it was like this perfection and guilt loop where I had to be perfect. I got really excited when I was perfect, but still had some anxiety about the next day. And then if I wasn't perfect, then I feel down and depressed that I wasn't perfect. Then I feel guilty for feeling down and depressed. And so I had to be perfect again. It was like perfection and guilt, perfection and guilt, perfection and guilt into this depression state. And this is the kicker. This is what really pissed me off. I was mad at myself for feeling depressed. I was mad at myself for being less than I could be when I knew in my heart I was meant for so much more than what I was getting. How many of you are in that state right now? You're in that state where you know you're meant for greatness, but you don't know how to pull it out of you, right? So from what I, I'll teach you guys, I went from those states of four times a week to one time a week. So one time every six months or, or uh, six weeks to uh, six months to a year. Now, like I said, I'm actually this annoyingly happy on a regular basis, right? And it changed my whole life because guess what? When you're happy, your business is easier. It went from 92 grand in debt to changing lives all over the world. Everything changed from this, everything. And so what, when you condition this in yourself, the game changes. So some days there are days when I don't feel this way. Right? I had one like four, four days ago right? It happens. Happens to the best of us. This isn't about perfection. It's about progress. So when that happens, though, I can get out of it in three minutes. What I learned from one of my main mentors, Tony Robbins, is that you can solve any problem in your life and your business in three minutes, or find direction in three minutes using the skill of gratitude. And I say skill because it's something you have to intentionally practice, okay? So for this exercise, get somewhere where you're going to allow yourself to feel totally vulnerable, totally emotional. Get where you need to go, because if you're like, if you know that from being on video, you're not going to play all out here, then it's not going to do anything for you. You're going to roll your eyes. That's all that's going to happen. So you need to play all out of this if you want it to work. Get where you need to go. And if you know from being on video, you're not going to be super emotional, turn your video off because it's going to get emotional. Okay. So get where you need to go and start to think of something in your life right now that stresses you out on a scale of one to 10, like a seven or higher like a seven or higher. Everyone have your thing? Raise your hand if you have your thing. Seven or higher. Cool. Think about how you haven't been able to solve this thing. Think about how you haven't been able to beat this. It's a challenge in your life. You just feel so stressed, so upset, so exhausted. Like you're spinning your wheels, but you don't know what you need to fix. You're wondering, will it ever be possible for me? Feel the pain of that for a second. Just feel how much it sucks to be in that state. How much it hurts. How much it feels hopeless. And you don't know where to go. Everyone have that feeling, that feeling of just emptiness and overwhelm. You know what I'm talking about? Cool. Close your eyes. Sit up nice and tall. Close your eyes. I'm going to take you through an exercise. You don't need to understand how this works. Just trust me. Close your eyes and take a really big deep breath in your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Another really big deep breath in your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And notice how your breath has already calmed your mind. Take both your hands and physically put them on your heart. Physically feel your heart. Feel the power of your heart. Feel the strength of your heart. Feel the beauty, the gift of your heart. And as you breathe, breathe deep into your heart. Like actually imagine the air flowing in your nose, big deep breath in. Through your heart and back out your mouth. Breathe into that heart every deep breath. Feel the power of it. Feel the strength of it. Your heart beats 100,000 times a day. 100,000 times a day. Without you doing anything for it. As long as it beats, you live. It's a gift. You didn't need to buy it. You didn't need to earn it. You didn't need to work for it. Something thought enough of you to give this amazing gift of life the moment you were born. It beats even when you sleep. You have inherent worth because this is beating in your chest right now. So take a moment 
and just appreciate this gift of life for a second. Just cherish this gift of life for a second. The fact that you're here, the fact that you get to experience all these amazing things. And while you're here in this beautiful state and you're feeling this amazing gratitude, step back into a memory from your life, a beautiful memory that you can just feel so grateful for. What's that memory for you? Could be 20 years ago, could be today, just a beautiful moment with a spouse, with a kid, doesn't matter. The pet, any moment, memory at all. But instead of seeing that memory from the outside, step back into that memory like you're there. Relive it. See exactly what you saw then, hear what you heard then, feel what you felt then now in that beautiful moment. Take that all in and feel so grateful, so alive, so happy that you got to experience this beautiful gift of a memory. And when you feel that overwhelming joy and gratitude, when you feel that, take a really big, deep breath and breathe that deep into your heart right now. Breathe it in. And now, step into a second memory. What's a second memory in your life? A memory that you can just feel so deeply grateful for. What's that memory? And with that one, go back to it like you're there. Don't just see it from the outside through your own eyes. Relive it. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt then now. And just breathe that memory deep into your heart, feeling so grateful, so happy, so alive, so appreciative. And just take that all in. Just appreciate that for a moment. And know this feeling's within you whenever you want. And now just for fun, let's do a coincidence. What's something in your life you didn't make happen but it led to something that you value or cherish. You know, you were in line at Starbucks and you met the love of your life. You didn't mean to get pregnant, now you have an amazing family. You got a message on Facebook, you're building your dreams. What's that coincidence for you? And what did it lead to? Why is your life such a gift? Because that amazing coincidence, what did it lead to a person, a career, an insight, a life change? What is that coincidence for you? Take that all in right now and think of everything it led to and why your life is so beautiful because of that one coincidence that you didn't make happen, but it happened. Was that actually a coincidence or were you being guided? It's so beautiful when you realize that life is always happening for you and not to you. Always, even the problems, even the pain, even the struggle, it's a gift because you can learn from it. it. leads to greater growth, greater aliveness, a more elevated version of you. So take a moment. And just feel so grateful for that coincidence and everything it led to. And now start to like well this up in your body. Feel the energy start to build like it's crescendoing to a peak. And feel the energy building within you. Feel the gratitude for your heart beating 100,000 times a day. Feel that first memory, just breathing it into your heart, that second memory, that coincidence, just feel the energy intensifying, try to triple the amount of overwhelming gratitude and appreciation for, that you have for this amazing gift of life and take it all in, feel it radiating out from every direction in your body. Feel the energy circulating through your arms, down through your legs, up through your head, every direction. Just feel the energy throughout your body, just feeling so grateful, so alive, so happy. Just say thank you. Just say thank you and appreciate this amazing gift of life for a moment. It just feels so cool. From this beautiful state, from your heart, not your head, from your heart, go back to that stressor that you totally forgot about. Go back to that stressor. And from your heart, from this beautiful, grateful place, ask your heart to complete the following sentence from your heart. In this stressful situation, all I need to remember is blank. In this stressful situation, the right thing to do is blank. In this situation, all I need to say is blank. And ask your heart for the answer. All I need to say, all I need to do, all I need to remember, all I need to be, all I need to learn is what? And when you have your direction, and you have that next step, Go ahead and open your eyes. You come back on camera. How many of you just got a glimpse into the real you? How many of you guys just found who you really are? That is the woman you really are. That was you. That's the you that's not conditioned by fear. That's the you that can solve any problem in her business because you 
are not the type of person that's going to go through life trying to stay safe anymore. You're going to freaking go for it because life is too short to not go for it. Your life could change at any time. You do not control the length of your life, but you do control its depth and its meaning. You were are not put here to experience mediocrity. You're meant to feel fully alive every minute of every day because you're exactly where you need to be. You have to ask yourself, is what you've been doing working? Is it actually working? Once you implement what we talked about today and actually learn how to do it, you will radically change your world forever. Can you imagine what would happen? And by the way, this isn't just you. This isn't just your, your business, this is your bank account, this is your, your spouse. Imagine how your relationship, how many of you guys are in a relationship right now? Imagine how that would thrive. If you changed this, everything would be different. Imagine how your, your kids would change. Imagine how everything would change. This goes beyond you, it's about the lives you touch. Imagine how your social media would change. Everything would be different if you master what we talked about today. There are three things you absolutely must master if you ever want to break through and live a life by true design. And by design, I don't just mean physical terms, I mean emotional terms. And one of those three things are, we talked about it. Number one, you must resolve your inner conflicts. You must not just come to terms with your past, not just forgive, but also learn how to be grateful for it. And truly so glad it happened. You must. Number two, you must shatter your limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering ones. You have to create so much pain behind staying in the same spot and so much pleasure about changing it that you change it. You have to learn how to do that. And number three is you have to learn how to live in that committed state. You have to learn how to live in that committed state so when you go after your big dreams, it doesn't determine your happiness, so it puts you in that state to create those big goals. Those three things, when you master them, they will radically change your entire life world. And if that's something, guys, that you truly feel, you know, in your heart, you need to master, I'd be privileged to offer you the opportunity to join Appreciation Academy today. I'd love to take just a couple minutes and share with you what it's about. There's no pressure whatsoever. If it's not for you, that's cool, right? But if you've been pushing so hard for a goal and it feels like it's getting further away and it seems so much easier for other people, and you just, you have the tools, you have the Insta story training, you have the invite training, and it doesn't work for you, but it works for everything else, everyone else. What's the common denominator there? It's how you think, it's how you feel. And if you have those days where some days you crush it, some days you can't get off the couch, and you're doing what I've been watching friends, spinning your wheels, not knowing what you need to fix, but knowing you need to fix something, and you're going through that perfection and guilt loop, wishing your life was different, not knowing why you can't change, and just in, the, in your mind, the back of your head is going, if it hasn't happened by now, will it ever happen? In the back of your mind, you're going, will I ever feel successful? Will I ever be successful? If that is you and you have that negative self-talk, those many beliefs, that lack of worth, you absolutely have to change your thinking. And I've created an online course that will teach you how to break through all of it. And I mean all of it. It is how I went from $92,000 in student debt, furious with my past, to earning a high six-figure income, changing lives all over the world, and helping people every single day along the way, feeling so fulfilled and so passionate. And I don't share that to impress you. I share that to impress upon you that if I can do it, hell, you can do it. There are over 500 Beachbody coaches in this program, created by a former Beachbody coach for coaches. This teaches you how to change your thinking. You know that you need to resolve inner conflict, shadow limiting beliefs, and close the gap by appreciating the journey along the way. This program will teach you how to do that. It teaches you how to attract success instead of repel it. And because your leader is amazing, you guys have 50% off of this. 50% off of this program. And that's for a payment plan or full pay option. So even if things are tight, there's still financing available to make it work at that 50% discount. And if you remember from the beginning of this call, how I talked about how Darren Hardy said, if you want to grow, you have to invest 10% of your earnings into your personal growth. Jen Sincero said, Jen Sincero said, put it on the card and you will grow to the person that earns it back, right? All those things that I did when I was 92 grand in debt, that's what changed my life. So whether it's through me or through someone you trust more, you absolutely must invest in your growth because you cannot change your life from the mindset that brought you to your current life. You can't. 
It's impossible. And that's why I have a 90 day guarantee on this program, guys. 90 days. 90 day guarantee in this program where you can literally finish it and you finish it, do the work and you're going, Brad, this didn't change my whole life. I will gladly give you your money back. No questions asked whatsoever. Okay. You guys know who Jen Richardson is? 15 star diamond coach, million club member, four time elite beach body coach. She says, and I quote, appreciation Academy is the missing link that every beach body coach needs to finally see success in their business. You guys know who Micah Folsom is? Double 15 star diamond rock star. I don't even know how many millions of dollars a year that woman earns, right? She's insane. She says, and I quote, if you're doing all the things and you're just not successful and you don't know why, or even if you are successful, but you're just not fulfilled, you absolutely must do this for yourself. And I can go on and on. There are hundreds of testimonials from Beachbody coaches endorsed by the top leaders in your entire company. My goal is not to impress you, it's to impress upon you that this is real. It gets you unstuck. And I'm talking your entire life, not just your business. Your marriage, your business, your bank account, your sales, your happiness, everything. It rips away the layers of pain, preventing you from who you're meant to be. This is not a business training. It's not going to teach you how to do Instagram stories. It's not going to teach you how to recruit. It's not going to teach you how to do it. It won't do that. That won't work, by the way, until you silence this the negative self-talk and resolve this, that inner conflict and genuinely live with a smile on your face. And by the way, guys, I want to make a promise to you and give you my word. I will not disappear on you. I have been in courses where I've purchased and the instructor pieces out, dumps you in a group. Bye. Right. For you, except the way it is me answering your, your comments in the Facebook group. It is me doing the office hours every single week. It is not some assistant. I am there for you every single way, every single day. So just like we talked about guys, business success and money will not create happiness. Happiness creates those things. And this is the only course I've ever seen in my life that teaches you how to be genuinely happy. It's how I went from stuck to where I am now. It is seven years of growth packed together. So you don't need to wait that long. And the results of the hundreds of beach body coaches speak for themselves. So if you felt something real, if you've been living in a memory that says you're not enough, if you have those limiting questions, it's time to break through that. You have to ask yourself is what you're doing working. And if not, you can't change your life from the mindset that got you to where you are. If you've been spinning your wheels wanting success, it's time for that breakthrough in this course. I will show you how I, how I did it. So if you'd like to work together as a team, grow together as a team, all you have to do to claim the discounted rate is head to bradbizjack.com slash team call. bradbizjack.com slash team call. Uh, don't go through bradbizjack.com because that's not going to give you the 50% off. So bradbizjack.com slash team call. You're going to see a little opt-in page. That opt-in page helps me keep track of what team you came from because if more than 10 people enroll, I'm going to give even more money back to you, right? But everyone will have to enroll at that 50% off discount either way. So don't let that be a barrier to entry. The next page after you go to that opt-in page will be the sales page with all the information, all the pricing, what's included, all the insane amounts of thousands and thousands of dollars of bonuses included in there. It's going to be incredible, okay? So again, that's bradbizjack.com slash team call. And, uh, and Britt has all this information in her email. She's got an image and a, a link that she can share with you guys as well. Um, but either way, guys, thank you. I know I went over my time, but thank you so much for the privilege of serving you tonight. I hope you got something out of this and I hope you truly take advantage of that 90 day guarantee. And I hope to be your coach in the journey through Appreciation Academy. So Brittany, I will turn it back to you, my friend. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Brad, ladies. I, like, I got chills. I was crying and seeing the chat of so much like yeses and things that like everyone relates to. What is so important is to A, always know that like you are never alone in this journey, whether or not you think you are the only person struggling exactly like Brad said, that's the story that you're telling yourself. And we have to, like, my biggest thing is getting rid of those BS stories, those bullshit stories we've always told ourselves and start rewriting them and rewiring them into that person, borrowing confidence from that woman you want to be seven years from now. Like, right, we know that that's our motto, Bor borrow confidence from that person you are seven years from now. And I just have to say, you guys, anytime that I have invested in personal development, like courses um, and different conferences and incredible like mentorships like this. 
they have completely changed my business. And anytime things have flowed, anytime it's been easy for Brit, it's because I am pouring myself into things like this. Like when I went to High Performance Habits with Brendan Bruchard this like spring, like guys, I just look back, my highest success club points were from that time. And that's because I was free. I was easy. I was living as high performance Brittany. So guys, it is an investment. And I just, if, if you can, and like, if you're ready to push past this barrier, like you, you know, the trainings, right? Hit, help people with a challenge pack, get them with it. Like you guys know the things to do to hit your goals. But the reason why you're not doing it is because what's up here. So if you can, like, please, please, please go into that like team call link. Um, I'll be posting it in the team page, but thank you so much to everyone who popped on this call. Um, Brad, thank you so much. That was like beyond all expectations. And I'm so thankful for you and that you took time away from your wife and everyone to come speak to us. And ladies, thank you so much for being a part of this. And I mean, let's go take action. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, Brad, thank you again. And um, ladies, I cannot wait to go see like the team call group go explode. So have an awesome night, you guys. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you so much.